Hey, Ezra Firestone here with you, and this presentation is going to be what I learned from $100 million in sales, my own brand, in the last four and a half years. So thanks for being here. Let's jump right in. I own and operate one of the world's largest Shopify stores. We've done almost $100 million in the last four and a half years here, most of it uh, in the last four years. And I build teams as well. I have three companies. I have Smart Marketer, which is an education company selling courses, Zipify, which is the Shopify application company, and uh, Boom, which is the one that you just looked at. Uh, and when you combine those three companies together, I've actually generated about $140 million in revenue in the last four and a half years for my own brands. And I get the chance to relate with thousands of entrepreneurs every year. And these are the big problems that we face, that, that the community reports to me. The biggest one is scaling ads profitably. That's really big. And then also problems that people have are money and funding, hiring, sourcing, and training, diversification of product and traffic source, growth plateaus, and life work balance. We're going to kind of touch on a bunch of those in this presentation. So people ask me, what's the play? Hey man, you know, you've made it. You started with nothing, working a full-time job, and now you've got three companies, two of them seven figures a year, and one of them eight figures a year. So, so how do you do that? And I'm going to share with you specifically what I learned uh, from $27.7 million in ad spend to generate this $98 million in revenue on this one brand. Uh, so if you want to make it to an eight-figure brand, these are the things you're going to need to know. And then I'm going to transition to talk to you, transition into talking to you about um, what to do uh, to optimize your Shopify store. Uh, you can see here I spent $22 million on Facebook. Um, I spent about $5.5 million on Google. Um, and I spent about... I generated 113,000 email leads in the last, uh, this year alone. Uh, and I spent 5 million so far on Facebook this year alone. So I'm actually just only getting better. It's not like I did this in the past. Like I'm doing this right now. Um, and so what I learned, I was just showing you the breakdown, right? I mostly spend on Facebook and then I also spend maybe 20% of my budget on Google. I'm working to increase the Google. Um, here's some things that I learned. The game is won or lost on the back end. So you can see here, this is 91 million of that 98 million. And uh, first time customers made up 50 million of it, but returning customers made up 40 million of it. So you're going to need to achieve repeat purchases from the people who buy from you once if you want to scale to eight figures. And the way to do that is to expand your product line, to go all in on product line expansion. You know, the, these two products here uh, that you see in the top left, Boomstick Trio and Boomstick Color, those are the only products people come to me for. Those are my front end customer acquisition products. All my other products are sold on the back end as upsells and cross sells. Um, so you got to get more products that you can sell to people who come in one time. You can see when I first scaled was 2016, only 22% repeat business because that was the first year I really grew from like 3 million a year to 17. 2017, I was up to about a third of my business from people who had bought in the past. Uh, 20. 18, I was at 50% almost of my business from people who had bought in the past coming back and buying again. 2019, a little bit lower because my revenue was so much higher. So down at 42%. And this year I'm at around, I'm at like 22 million already this year. I'm at like 40, 40%. So the point is you're going to want to be in that, you know, 30 to 40% range of your revenue coming from people who had bought in the past, whether that means you sell subscription, whether that means you have products that you can upsell and cross sell, whatever, you're going to want to achieve that one way or another. And we'll talk about kind of how, um, one of the ways to do it is to go all in on email. You can see here, you know, brands that make it to eight figures generally have this metric where 34% of my revenue in the last year came from emails. Um, and I send content emails and I send promotional emails. I use GIF animations in my emails and every six weeks I run a sale campaign. I don't care if you only have 50 people on your email list. At least once a month, you need to be sending a piece of content, ideally once a week. That's kind of educational, valuable. Maybe it's a curation of stuff they might be interested in. And once every six weeks, you need to offer a discount on whatever products you do have. And you will make more money if you do this. Brands that are in the eight-figure range send three to four times as many emails as you do. Email is still the number one communication medium between brands and subscribers. And then ads are the second communication medium. You also need to go all in on user-generated content. So what we do is we incentivize our customers to give us videos, images, gifts by saying, hey, you know, uh, we'll give you a $10 gift certificate to our store if you um, give us a video of, of talking about why you love our product, why you bought from us, what you think of how you use it, et cetera. And then these become our ads. They go on our emails. They go on our landing pages. You've got to go all in on user generated content because it's free to create and it's so valuable. 
we use it all over the place on our site and everything. Um, and we, you know, we get before and after pictures. We just use this type of content as our main marketing material because it's cheap and there's nothing better. There's nothing more native. There's nothing more authentic. Um, the other thing that you have to understand is product versus story. Now, most people only understand product, which is what am I selling and what are the benefits of it? But you also, if you want to get to eight figures, have to understand who are you selling to and why are they interested? Who are the people buying from you and what is actually motivating their, their interest? And then you can tell stories through content. Um, and then these are just some high level stuff. I'm going to get into the shop by stuff in a minute, but if you don't understand this stuff and it's not informing what you actually do, and I'm going to tell you like the main things we're focused on this year, the big high level things, then you're not going to be successful. Mobile versus desktop. You need two versions of your site. You need a mobile and tablet version and you need a desktop version because those users are completely different and they're um, v viewing on different browsers um, and people who are on mobile are going to stay less for less period of time. The site needs to load quicker, less content, etc. And so if you're not optimizing and building for desktop in one way and mobile in another way, you're missing out on uh, high conversion rates that you could be having. And I teach about this at my website, zipify.com, which is my soft, so Shopify software company. Um, but you got to do that. And, you, and I'm going to show you later one of the ways that we increased our mobile conversion rate um, significantly. I'm going to show you the actual breakdown behind that. Um, the other thing is... You need a, an adequate top line spend to amplification ratio. So in 2018, I generated 25.1 million. To generate that, I spent 6.2 million. My viewpoint is that I spent exactly right, that there's a perfect top line revenue to advertising spend ratio, which is 15 to 30% of your top line revenue should be reinvested in amplification. So if you make a million dollars a year in revenue, then 150,000 to 300,000 should be invested the next year in paid ads to grow the brand. So a million dollars in revenue is not a million dollars in profit, right? So think about that. Uh, 30, 15 to 30% of your revenue needs to be reinvested in amplification, which is the fuel that grows the brand, the fuel that moves the vehicle of your brand forward. So, you know, you got to set your budget and spend it. It's like a diet or a workout program. You have to do it every day. Um, I spent 6.2 to return 25.1. That's 24.7% of my total revenue was spent on amplification, which is in that range, which is good. Um, and there's a year over year halo effect that happens for brands that make it uh, where you know, year one and year two, you're buying amplification to grow your brand and you're generating audiences, you're generating email leads, you're generating customers, you're watering your brand and you're, the seed is starting to sprout beneath the soil and the, the assets that you generate in year one and year two support you in year three and four and five, which is why years three through five tend to be the years where people hit seven and eight figures. It's like you need that halo effect, uh, which is why I advocate for consistent investment every day. Set your budget, spend it. You must spend consistently. Um, and you get out of your brand what you put in. Most people are thinking about what can I take out? What, what can I get paid? That's the wrong attitude. The right attitude is what can I invest into my brand? Who can I get to help me? How much more money can I get to invest? Like, how can I not take any money out of it and let the snowball grow for a couple years before I then start pulling from the brand? If you want to build a truly big brand, that's what you got to do. Um, the other thing that eight figure brands have is they've got a premium and truly great product. So Quip toothbrushes, M. Jemmy shoes, Allbirds, um, Purple Mattress, Tushy. Only one of these brands was a new product. Allbirds was kind of like the full first wool runner that uh, really came to the market. But every one of these other brands, electric toothbrushes uh, existed, leather shoes existed, um, bidets existed, and fancy pillows existed. The best product does not win in the marketplace. It doesn't have to be unique, and it doesn't have to be the best. The best promise wins in the marketplace. But the product has to live up to the promise that you make. So if you don't have a good product... All the marketing in the world will not save you if the customer gets the product and they're not happy with it. So you must create a truly great product. And I really like premium high price point products. It gives me a higher average order value and more profit per order to grow my brand. Um, so the first domino that we're focused on this year is product. Um, and some of the hacks that we're doing here is reformulating past products, adding new components, so changing out the, the componentry that they're in, adding new sizes, sending emails when they're back in stock, bundling and making kits, and then, of course, launching new products. But all these hacks where we can go out and say, hey, we reformulated this, or hey, we've got you know new biodegradable componentry, or hey, we've got a new size, or hey, this product is back in stock, or hey, buy this bundle. Those are ways to promote product without creating new ones, and they work super well. We're doing that a lot this year. 
Top line video advertising. You must get good at creating top line video ads. But that's a big domino for us this year is just continually optimizing our awareness pillar with native um, customer uh, videos that we can then optimize and cut together in different ways and have different formats and lengths. And um, the more that our top line works, then our retargeting buckets get filled and our loyalty bucket gets filled. So you've got to work on top line, specifically video ads. Um, you must also be generating email leads. This is just one of the ways that we do it. It's a, it's a giveaway uh, promo that we run once every, once every month. We also do content lead gen, but every eight figure brand is not only going out and buying customers through direct response sa uh, sales funnels, but they're also going out and buying email leads to grow their email list because some people uh, mature at a shorter, longer period of time, right? So you're going to get an email, you're going to warm them up over time, then you're going to convert them. It may not be within the 28-day Facebook pixel window. It might be within the 90-day window. And we spend 10% of our budget buying email leads, and you should be doing the same if you want to grow your brand as fast as you can. Um, smart social. So I have a course on my Smart Marketer blog where it's free, where I teach you how to do this, but um, you must be... And th this comes after direct response sales funnel and email sales funnel, but you must do this, which is engaging content, putting that out. So, so creating videos, creating articles, curating content on YouTube. Like I got a customer who, uh, one in my mastermind who just, uh, who sells knives and he goes out and gets like Emeril Lagasse videos on YouTube, cutting an onion and says, Hey, look at this cool onion video, how to cut onions. Hey, by the way, you can do that with our knives. So you don't have to create the content, um, but social contests, email lead generation, you've got to be doing social. Um, these are all the different kinds of content that we create. And you see half the revenue we generate from email comes from sales. The other half comes from sending out content to our list. Literally half the revenue that we generate comes from content on our email pillar and pre-sell articles. So this is advanced. This is only going to be for the advanced folks, but but we use um, advertorial marketing. And so this is basically, you know, advertisements to a um, article that then transitions into a pitch for our products. So then you go and check out our products, then goes through to our sales process, shopping cart, upsell funnel, et cetera. And uh, these pre-sell articles can be product specific. They can be for top line awareness. They can go in your autoresponders. They can be used during sale events. They can be used to email direct to your list. You can use them in retargeting um, and they're really powerful. And so that's that's our focus this year. Uh, product, email lead generation, top line video, social, and pre-sell articles. If those five things go well, the brand will work. So that's kind of the high level of what you got to do at the eight figure mark. And now, since I only have like 30 minutes, I want to transition into talking to you about how to optimize your Shopify store.